Now, you, you already talked about extrapolating, and that's, that was something that I kind of, I'm glad you brought it up. Now, the other one that kind of got me a little bit thinking, because you did mention, like, in two or three places that, for example, hurricanes were coming through the area, or that probably a tornado touched down. And I mean, today we have like these elaborate tracking systems, excluding Sharpies, obviously, that in the White House sometimes get used. But how, how would you, with the data that you have, how would you be able to track a, a hurricane, for example, in 1861 or 1862? There are historical meteorologists out there who know how to do that very well, better than I do. Um, I'm thinking particularly of uh, Professor Kerry Mock at the University of South Carolina, who studies exactly that. And what, what Professor Mock does is he travels throughout the country, and he goes to Great Britain, he goes elsewhere, and works with a lot of data, but especially ship logs. Mm. Because hurricanes are going to come out of the ocean before they hit land, if they ever hit land. So you look at ship logs and you check you check the requisite readings, look at barometric pressure, you look at all of the data points that hopefully the deck officer has filled in. And so you see the obvious signs of a hurricane and then you, you supplement that with newspapers, with the sort of qualitative accounts that I've been using, which allows you to sort of track those storms you also already know a lot about weather, so you sort of basically know where hurricanes go and how they act. So if you put all that together, you can actually do it. And it's just absolutely brilliant research. Uh, Kerry Mock and his, um, his research partner at the time, Mike, Mike Chenoweth, discovered a Civil War hurricane that did not exist in the written records. But through the use of ship logs and readings taken from land and newspaper accounts of destruction, they were able to find a previously unknown uh, hurricane, which hit the Apalachicola area um, in the middle of the war, in May, which is incredibly early. Yeah. And they named it Hurricane Amanda because it actually sank a ship in the U.S. Navy called the Amanda. That's how you do that. Hmm. And, and to me, it's really fascinating. Again, yeah. I don't know if I have all the skill set to do that. But once, once I knew, for example, that there was a hurricane that came through in September 1861, um, and you can sort of find out where previous meteorologists have, have decided that's where it was and when it was, then you look at the soldiers' accounts and you see it completely. Cool. I mean, you don't think about soldiers in West Virginia being affected by hurricane related flooding but in fact they were after the cheap mountain um, the same with the uh the storm that destroyed the well didn't destroy but slowed down the federal expedition into the sea islands in 1861 and that's how you do it and it, it, it's really it's really fascinating i i think if i you know if i'm reincarnated and i come back i don't want to be a historian uh, it really would be fun to get into this kind of meteorology because what is happening now is that all sorts of meteorologists are pushing back into the past mm -hmm. using current discoveries, current data, but also the data that you can find in the past. And so we're moving back into the 19th century and we're identifying uh, El Nino moments. We, we, there's some meteorologists who, with less evidence, are starting to pick out certain periods in the more distant past and linking that to weather changes. It, it's, it's really fun. But yeah, with the proper, the proper data, you can do it. And with hurricanes, you really need those ship blocks. Yeah. Well, it's sort of like the odd places where you find material, right? That yeah, sure. we can and be thankful that people on ships were taking good records yeah. of their journeys. And material that might be useless to us will be really valuable down the road. I remember taking historiography at Virginia Tech and you know, much beloved Bud Robertson was talking about the frustrations of archival research. You know, you find a you find a, a diary that 
is from a regimen that you really need and you look at it and you're so excited and there's nothing but weather data and how right. disappointing that was. <laughs> I thought about that story so many times when I was writing that book because that diary was suddenly valuable to me. Right. Because right. I was exploring the war in a different way. Um, sure. And as always, you know, in part what's happening in our world shapes our questions. Yes. Yes. I don't think it's surprising that we're looking at the environmental history of the Civil War, given that so many of us grew up in a period where uh, the environment became important to us. Mm -hmm. We had lots of discussions about climate change, for example. Um, so yeah, of course we're going to think about yeah. what was happening in the 1860s in this regard.